If you're looking for the best sports memorabilia and card break room on the internet, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Ultimate Autographs Live Break Room. Tonight's action will move fast, so we want to prep you for what you're about to see on your screen. First, the all-important dice roll number. At the top of the show, the host will randomize a series of numbers. The number selected from the randomizer will become the dice roll number for the entire show. Meaning every mystery box that is broken, the names of every collector will be placed on a list and randomized using the dice roll number for the show. Next, you see this black ticker down here? This shows you which numbers are still available in each and every Ultimate Autographs mystery box series. When a break fills or sells out, the host will ask for a number. This is where you make your selection from. Simply type a number in the chat and the host will pick the first number they see. Throughout the show, you may see two different types of breaks, divisional and top spot. Divisional breaks are most common. In this format, all eight individuals who enter a football theme break will be positioned next to one of eight football divisions after their names are randomized using the show's dice roll number. When the mystery box is opened, the football division of the team represented in that mystery box becomes the winning division. The lucky collector whose name is randomly placed next to that football division takes home the signed piece of authenticated memorabilia. Our top spot format is typically reserved for giveaways, college theme series, and non-football breaks. In a top spot break, all names are added to a list. They are randomized using the show's dice roll number. At the end of the randomization, the name at the top becomes the winner of the signed item or prize. Breaking sports memorabilia has never been easier or more fun than it is in Ultimate Autograph's live break room. Remember, Every mystery box series you see on the show can also be purchased as a personal mystery box that is either shipped directly to your home for you to open, or you can request to have it opened on a future Ultimate Autographs Live Breaks broadcast. Also, while you're waiting for your break to fill, we encourage you to look around ultimateautographs.com to see if you find a piece of memorabilia you love and want to add to your collection. And don't forget, Every live break spot you purchase automatically earns you 6% back in UA cash that you can later exchange for a mystery box or a signed item of your choosing. All right, the time has come. Let's break some certified authentic sports memorabilia in Ultimate Autographs Live Break Room. Tell them, boys. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Ultimate Autographs Live Break Studio. It is 8 p.m. Central on the Sunday night rendition of some UA Live Breaks, guys. Thank you very much for helping us fill up some breaks here. Before we start it, we've got some pre-fills, which means we're ready to rock and roll as soon as we start. Donnie here with Matty Bohan. And Matt, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Yeah. There you go. Don't lie. I'm not. That's good. Finally, Donnie got some help. <laughs> no, Matt was here earlier, just not in person. He yeah, was, was helping from... Behind the scenes, mm -hmm. now we've got you for today. Uh, Aiden says, what's up, Donnie and Maddie? Sup, the Don and Mr. Matt. What's up, Dusty? Got a lot of guys in the chat here. Good luck to my boys. Much more activity than today. Immediately more activity. Already three pre-fills. Let's get right into it, huh, Matt? What do you think? Let's do it. First thing we're going to do for tonight is a kitchen sink mixer. Kitchen sink mixer is a multi-memorabilia type of break. We have football stuff, basketball stuff, baseball stuff, entertainment stuff, um, things like that. Anything is possible. What's up, Hunter Hoops? <laughs> Bang. Six or higher on tonight's dice roll. It's going to be a four, not high enough. And then the second roll will be a five, still not good enough. One more. Will give us a six. Wow. Six tonight four, on five, the six. dice roll. Four, five, six, huh? Yeah, something like that, right? Hunter Hoops already calling out box doors. Hunter, thank you very much. Are you in this break? You sure are. Hunter knows the rules. It is not his first day. Not his first rodeo. Here we go, kitchen sink mixer number one. It's going to be Hunter Hoops in box number 26. 1420. Feels light. Light. Feels light. Here we go, guys. Best of luck. Thank you very much for the fill. For tonight's breaks, we have some uh, Flag Day replicas, Flag Day Authentics. We have Danny Dimes Platinum Series, and we have three past and present jerseys left. 
Donnie, I've been on a roll lately, so I'll see if we can keep it going tonight. Aiden, I love that. I love that. Good luck. 26 of 55. Did anyone watch the golf event today? Eight playoff holes in the PGA Tour event today. The Travelers Championship in Connecticut. Eight playoff holes. Probably the most I've ever seen. Best of luck, guys. Open the item, then we randomize the names. Looks like we have a jersey. And we have, oh, a baseball jersey. It is Andre Dawson. Classic Cubs player. Originally played with the Montreal Expos. Went over to the Cubbies. That's a Cubs jersey. Andre the Hawk Dawson. That's a nice auto, too. Very nice auto. Do you know that Andre Dawson wanted to be a Cub so bad that he signed a contract that was uh, far less than contracts he had been offered after the Expos? I did know that. He wanted to be a Cub so bad. Let's see who's going to take this one. This is a Cubs jersey, though. Oops. Or Dusty, this is the this is the Cubs jersey. Expos, I think you're sad because they're no longer a team. Six times on the dice roll, our top spot wins. Four, five, and number six, it's going to be Lee Kowiesel. Lee Kowiesel on the top. Let's go. Lee hey. Kowiesel on the top. Bang. Trevor, that's a great question. That is Andre Dawson. The Hawk, Andre Dawson on the Cubs custom jersey. He's a Hall of Famer now. Yes. Yes, he is. They got done dirty by the holdout. The Expos. I just saw something about uh, Vlad Jr. and Vlad Sr. through their first 250 games. They have almost identical stats. I think right? they have the same amount of home runs. Same sure. amount of home runs, and I think Vlad Jr. has like six more RBIs or something like that. Wow. Very cool hit. <laughs> Way to start it, Lee. Put down Lee. Yep, Marlins skid by. Yeah, true. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, count them out. I think the MLB is trying to expand. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to Montreal. To be honest, I could legitimately see them doing that. The Expos eventually became the Washington Nationals. Correct. That is correct. I think Rob Manfred is very interested in expanding, um, not just here, but overseas as well, which would be kind of interesting. That would be amazing. That would be a long away stand. A long away stand. We got two in Detroit, then we go to London for three. <laughs> Come back for the Angels. Well, well, yeah, I mean, you'd have to be in London for like a week. Yeah. All right, let's do, let's do the jersey, then we'll do the double helmet break. Aiden says, one of Derek Brooks' rep last night with Joe and an entry into the DAC Authentic. Nice. Very nice. All right, here we go. Past and present jersey. We got three boxes in here. Past and present jersey. Uh, we got 51, we got 59, and we have 60. 51, 59, 60. Robert B., If you guys want to give us a box number, you'll get your random divisions. Past and present jerseys. You can put that next authentic as a single as well. Okay. For the flag days. Yep. All right. There we go. Best of luck, guys. Thanks for the fill. Past and present jersey 51, 59, or 60. Douglas, Robert, Isaac, Douglas, Brandon Hostler, Karen Lambert, Nathan Largent, and Robert Boulet. I mean, didn't Toronto play in Tampa Bay this past year? Or did that? Oh, I mean, they did, right? No, see, they played, and they're still playing in Florida, right? They haven't gone back to Toronto yet. I think they were planning on going back soon. Hasn't happened yet. And last year, they played in Toronto. Or yeah, I mean, non-COVID times, they're in Toronto. Right. But with COVID and the border being closed, all right. that, so they got pushed... Pushed into the United States, pretty much. Do you watch any of Trevor Bauer's vlogs? I've tried to. He just... What's wrong? You don't like Trevor, Bla Trevor Bauer? He just... He annoys me. Yeah? He just... He's, 
one of those kids I just don't you would have been one of those kids I couldn't get you just would annoy me I really hang around with a lot probably okay. alright I try to watch his vlog <coughs> I think his vlogs are entertaining bless you thanks he definitely gives us a nice little look into how like yeah. how, how the lifestyle is also, first live break from my new house now that Dave doxed me. What's up, Elk? I'm gonna randomize these boxes if you guys don't want to call one out. 51, 59, or 60. <coughs> Bless you, sir. Yes. Thanks. All right, randomizing the box numbers. Yeah, last year the Blue Jays did play in Buffalo. Ooh, 59, right. it was 59. 59. I want to say they're back now in Toronto. I randomized that one too many times, but on the sixth roll, it was at number 59. Rookie move. It's not your first day. It seems like it. Do you like those panda cookies? Yeah, they're all right. Amazing. It's one of my favorite things. I am back. Not been here too a while. Here we go. Elk, not been here in a while. 59, let's see what we have for the jersey. Quarterback for the only undefeated football team of all time. 17-0 in a season. Miami Dolphins, that's Bob Greasy. Bob Greasy, a Purdue product. Very successful quarterback. Boom. Bob Greasy going to the AFC East. Who's got it? Nathan Largent. Nathan Largent hadn't been here in a while. He's actually, from what I remember, Nathan Largent told me that his cousin is Steve Largent. Really? That's what he says. That's interesting. I don't think he would lie to me. Hopefully not. Donnie, did you hear about the first ejection from the new foreign substance rule? I did. The guy from the Mariners got ejected today. He will face a 10-game suspension, and the manager was ejected for the game as well. Does the manager face suspension, too? Um, I'm not sh totally sure about that, but, um, yeah, it happened right, literally right when we went live for our second, or two o'clock show. Hector Santiago, a former White Sox. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a, uh, that's a milestone. First guy to get ejected from the rule. Love to see it. Good hit, mate. I'm all for it. What did they find on his hand? I don't know. I didn't really see. It was, I think it was some sort of time tower or something, maybe. So what I've seen. And this is why I bring up the... Uh, this is why I bring up the Trevor Bauer thing. As he kind of shows you in the vlog that enough sweat mixed with rosin can create an extremely sticky substance on your hand. To where, like, the ball, he would literally hold the ball and open his hand, and the ball would stick in his hand. Okay. Those are two very legal substances. Yeah, I mean, if, if I can get behind that. Have you ever tried it? Oh, I mean, I, I've played baseball forever, so I know what a sweaty hand um, with rosin? feels like. With rosin? Yeah. Is it crazy sticky? I mean, yes, but it's not like... It's a serious You can't advantage. throw the ball. Like, it's not like you have to adjust to it, necessarily. Okay. Vanderkan. Cool username. I saw a hilarious vid I sent to Dave about the Scherzer situation with Girardi. I love it. I love that video where Girardi wants Scherzer checked once. Scherzer gets checked. Uh, passes. Wants Scherzer checked again. Scherzer gets checked and passes. And the third time, because Scherzer had been doing something that he doesn't really do, is that he was like taking off his hat a lot. You know I, I, mean? feel, I feel like he's a sweater, though. He is extremely sweaty. He's a sweater. He's extremely sweaty. He would, like, take his hat off a lot. He was, like, really touching the bill of his hat, taking it off, rubbing oh, his so hair. He was, like, he was, like, tempting. I think he was tempting Joe Girardi. Well, then, so then Girardi had him check the third time. And he got pissed at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Church is weird because he has two different colored eyes. Yeah. That's and when he looks at you, it looks strange. He actually wasn't born with that. Did you know that? He developed? Really? No, I think he got hit in the head. Really? And one side of his eye. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know he, he got hit in the head or something. Or 
something he got got hit with something as a kid, or and then his eye like lost the pigmentation in, in, in his pupil. Slon says Matt used crazy glue on your hand. You would not be able to. That would rip skin off. <laughs> So yeah, they had to check his hair. So literally, the umpire had to put his hand in Scherzer's hair and like wipe his sweaty head. You got to do what you got to do, man. It's terrible. Guys, before we open this box for the Flag Day series, I'm going to go ahead and play the video because the Flag Day is a special series and each box contains a flag that has a name on it. That name, you could either select $10 in UA Cash or grab a top spot break for the item that you see inside the box. I'm going to go ahead and play the video so you guys know what to be ready for when we open up these boxes. June 14th is Flag Day, the day that commemorates the adoption of the Stars and Stripes by the United States in 1777. It's like the 4th of July, but a lot less cool. Even though it's a nationally recognized holiday, nothing special has ever happened because of Flag Day. Ultimate Autographs is about to change that with four special Flag Day Mystery Box series. One Jersey Mystery Box series, one Replica Helmet series, one Authentic Helmet series, and one Mixer series. There are 200 boxes in total. Each box contains a little yellow flag. Written on each flag is the description of one of five possible Replica or Authentic Helmets signed by past and present stars. When you see the name of the player on your flag, you can choose to be entered into a top spot break for their signed lid, or you can choose to forego your spot and walk away with $10 in UA cash. Do your patriotic duty and purchase a specially marked Flag Day mystery box today at ultimateautographs.com. Alrighty, there we go. The Dutch auction item is up on the screen. The Dutch auction item is up on the screen. It's a Bernie Kosar. Up on the uh, break page, as to say. It's a Bernie Kosar Eclipse Mini. We tried it earlier today. Didn't have a ton of bites during the show, so I thought I would carry it over until tonight. It's going to be sitting at that final price already. So it's already at the bottom dollar price. And if now it sells, we could run another one. So pretty cool. I can maybe can lower that Bernie Kosar once more. All right. Let's rip. Let's rip. Fly the Authentic 31 of 50. Who left a Danny Dimes? It's a great question. It's a great question. I uh, That series has been going on for, for a while now. I don't know the headliners remaining in that series. I know those are, our, I think, final two or last couple boxes. The flag in this one is the Kyler Murray Authentic. Very nice. So the winner will also either get $10 in UA Cash or a top spot wins in the Kyler Murray Authentic. And the hit is going to Dave Vanderbeck in the NFC North with Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Nice pull, dude. Jared Allen. That's a great one. That is a great one. A nice big auto. Yeah, he does. Greasy. And, yeah. Nippy Dawson. Jared Allen, nice pull, man. There you go. Vanderbeck, love the helmet. And he wants it for the Kyler. Whoa. Why is this all white? <clears throat> there it is. All right, we sold out of the Danny Dimes. I need to check and see if we have more of those boxes. Oh. Nice hit. You want me to go check or you? I can look. Dave. Dusty's a fan of Jared Allen. Love to see it. He was a beast. Dusty, are you a... Uh... He's a Viking fan. Dusty is a Viking fan, that's right. Jared Allen had a stay with the Bears too, didn't he? He did indeed. Wasn't very good though. Nah, he's kind of one of the end of the road. Yeah, he's kind of at the end of his career. Right? I remember when we got him, I was like, let's go. Yeah, he was he was a solid player. You know why I was excited about that? Because he would kill the Bears. 
He was, yeah, he was a good player, man. He was. Underrated. Jared Allen. Good dance moves. Was a good dancer, too. Was a good dancer as well. All right. Spearing an elk? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> he seems like one of those kind of guys. We got a first timer here tonight. Jeff Womack. Jeff, thank you for joining us here in the Ultimate Autographs Live Breaks. Appreciate it very much. We have a double box break coming up for the Flag Day Replicas. Flag Day Replicas. We got Jeff, we got Brad, we got Brandon Hostler, we got Karen Lambert, Aiden Sabatinelli, Zachary Erickson, Ricky Ashley. All ready to go. 15 and 24. Mac, you grab those boxes. I'm going to randomize this list. We're going to get these breaks a rolling. 15 and 24. Thanks, Matt. For the Robs. Uh huh. All right. Six times on the dice roll. Thanks, dude. Catchy. Yeah, it is so bad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 15 and 24. Flag Day replica boxes, 15 to 50. All right, the flag for this one is... So if you win, you get to choose $10 in UA cash, or you'd like a top spot entry into a Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott Authentic. Bang. And the hit is a throwback Ohio State Buckeye. Part of that Orange Crush defense for the Denver Broncos. This goes to Ricky Ashley. It is Randy Gratishaw. Linebacker, good defensive player. Randy Gratishar for the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Bless you. Did you sneeze? I you sneeze in you. It's contagious. It is indeed. Gratishar, full size. Ricky, let me know if, if you like the. Top spot in the deck or the $10 UA cash? Slime says two questions. What's up with the Dutch Kosar? Show that right after this break for you, Slime. And what was wrong with the yesterday's audio? <laughs> Great question. I'm not 100% sure. I was, I don't know. Joe didn't really say much. Didn't I think he said it was a little sketchy, but. A little bad. I don't know. I wasn't. Not sure. Is it better today? It's better today. Yeah, it sounded decent. When I, I mean, it sounded okay when I was listening earlier. Fly day rep 24. All right, Ricky Ashley wants in with the DAC. Thanks, Rick. In the last 30 years, what team has used five different starting quarterbacks who won the Heisman when in college? It's wow. got to be the Cleveland Browns. Right? It's a good guess. Ooh, cool. Ooh, I have another good guess. Flag for this one is another Dak Prescott top spot. Another Dak Prescott. It might be Cleveland, it might be Arizona. Was it Cleveland? Yeah, it looks like it. The king is here! <laughs> Woo! Oh, and then Arizona with four. I'm pumped about that. Headliner. Sheesh. Headliner hit! Ricky Williams. Spoke me every day. Nice. In script, I love that helmet. <laughs> One of my favorite pulls. That is beautiful. Ricky Williams, Riddell Eclipse. Going to Brandon Hostler, B Hustle. Brandon, let me know if you want the $10 UA cash or the Dak Prescott top spot. 
It's a nice big paint pen, too. Good call, man. I like that lingo you just used. Top spot. There we go. got you. Beautiful. Great, great item right there. Fun fact that, that uh, Calvin Johnson has his own like dispensary in Detroit coming up. Like, Did not know that. Something like that. There we go. They rep. And I'll grab her. What's the largest state by population that does not have an NFL franchise playing home games inside its borders? Oh boy. It's a great question. Did you already put Brandon in the deck? I did not. to state by population. That's a, that's a kind of a tricky question because it could be a small state that has a lot of people. I was going to say New York, but they have Buffalo. Nebraska? And they have the Jets and the Giants. They play in New Jersey. No. Who? The Giants? The Jets and the Giants. They play in New Jersey. Giants don't play in New York? <laughs> Near the Jets. They share my life. Which is in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Learn something new every day. But it's not New York, because Buffalo plays there. It's in Nebraska. Um, Ohio's got one. Pennsylvania's got one. Illinois's got one. Ohio has one. Minnesota has one. Cleveland. Cleveland. Montana. I feel like there's not a lot of people though. Yeah, there's like nobody in. I was thinking South Carolina. Missouri? Are we sure it's not Nebraska? He said not Nebraska and not N E or O R. Oh, E N E is Nebraska. Alabama? Nope. Yeah. I don't know how many people. Alabama. Are. I don't think Alabama is very populated. Oh, it is, it is Virginia. Nice, Bob. Virginia. Interesting. No, West Virginia either. Yeah, because the Washington football team plays in Maryland, right? They're not in D.C.? No, I think they're in Landover, Maryland. You know your stuff over there. I do know my you stuff. You know your locations, apparently. I do. <laughs> I'm a big geography guy. Are you? Yeah. You think you'd be good at Jeopardy? Um, yeah. I, at that kind of stuff. Do you know a lot of, like... I couldn't tell you, like... A European geography or no? Yeah, I mean, I could do, I could hold my own probably. Right, here we go. That's a Donnie Reynolds question. Which one? That one. Who was the only running back last year that had three 70 plus yard runs? Uh, a couple guys come to my head immediately Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb. Not Henry. Dalvin Cook. Could be Derrick Henry. Could be Dalvin Cook. 70 plus yards. Not going to be like someone you think of right away. I feel like Dalvin Cook is on that list. Can't answer after the break. 45. Double box break here for the Authentics and the Danny Dimes. Dusty is, Dusty is a Viking guy, so. Yeah, that's true. 
it might be Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones strikes me as a guy that would have a bunch of long runs. I feel like he does have a bunch of long runs. It's a good hit. This guy had a couple long runs. In his day, powerful guy. Fire those cannons. Mike Allstott. Mike Allstott going to Christopher Wells. Nice say Chris. That is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, Ronald Jones is a good guess. Oh, gosh. Little Tommy Pickles. <laughs> Why'd you call him that? Why do I call him Tommy Pickles? Who? Tom Brady. Oh, I thought you called Ronald Jones that. No. Really? Okay. Joe Aguilar. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Ooh, Raheem Moster. He missed a lot of games. Though. Joe Aguilar. Comment of the night, $5 UA cash. That, that's a good one. That is a good one. That's great. I just can't picture Joe running. With the football? Full pass? Uh, no, just I can't picture him running in general. I can see it. He says he skates really well. That's different. All right, I'm going to get one more guess. Both of us get one more guess. We don't have any of them? We could have taken 100 guesses. It is going to be... Miles Sanders. That's your guess? Yeah. Ooh, Naheem Hines. Here we go. So, this guy. I think he has the most yards in a season for this team. Maybe the most touchdowns in a season, too. He was a very successful running back. Wow, nice. Lunar Eclipse. Lunar Eclipse. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. Bang. That is Jamal Anderson. With the Dirty Bird inscription. How did you get that? Let's go! I'm on fire! I'm extremely disappointed that Joe Aguilar was not one of the answers. Yeah, me too. Chris Wells goes back to back there. 619. 82-yard touchdown. 74-yard touchdown. 274-yarders. Let's go! Jamal Anderson, Lunar Eclipse. Nice pull. Miles Sanders had an 82-yard touchdown against the Saints, 74-yard touchdown against the Steelers, 74-yard run against the Ravens. That ended with him fumbling. The loose ball was recovered by J.J. Arcega whiteside Jason Spencer says, Donnie, we need to do a series of these helmets. I agree. They're just really hard for us to get. We don't see a lot of Lunar Eclipses. Chris Wells, way to take them both, man. Nice break. Nice break there for Chris Wells. Took the all stock. Anderson. That is a clean sweep. A sweep. Sweet. Shit. Donnie, you want to show this dodge dog. Boom. Showing the dodge dog. What's wrong with it? Uh, so what I see wrong with it is that it does have some marks on the top of the stripe here. There's a mark on top of the stripe there, and then a mark towards the back of the stripe. Dusty, you could hit us with as much trivia as you'd like. I appreciate the trivia. That's nice. And it's a nice mini, just the two marks there on the stripe for the bony. Bernie Kosar. A Lunar Series would be fire. That is just hard to find. That's hard to get. A Baseball Series. I agree, Jason Spencer. That'd be pretty cool, Jason. We're going to see what we have in inventory. It would be expensive, man. It's rare for a player to catch 100 passes but not be a pro bowler. Who's the only player who's done this multiple times? Larry Fitzgerald. It's a good guess.
He's the only player who's done this before. 100 passes, but not be a pro bowler. Is he current? Or is he... Is he no longer playing? Yes, NHL. Love to see it. Love to see it, chat. Plexico. <laughs> That'll have been us a good guess. Sheesh. I have no idea. Are we done with the Danny Dimes? No. We have none left. Let me run and check really fast. Okay. We did do the mixer, yes. Matt, you want to give him a breakdown as to how many spots are left in some breaks? Yeah. Current as of last year, but has now retired. Edelman. It's Edelman? Mm hmm. Um, live break number two for the Flag Day Authentic. Uh, single box break, seven spots remaining. Live break number two for the past and present jersey. We have two of those left. Six spots remaining. Uh, live break number two for the Flag Day reps. Eight spots remaining. Kitchen sink number two, nine spots remaining. Uh, Danny Dimes is sold out, we think. Um, and the Dutch auction is at its lowest price. You want the Dutch? Take it or leave it at sixty dollars. Right. All right. Check on this uh, Hawks Bucks game. Let's see what's going on. Last time I looked, it was a five-point game. I know the Hawks jumped out to an early, like, 15-2 to two lead. The Bucks got it closer and closer. I did state earlier in the break that the Bucks would take the four-and-a-half-point spread, and it would be the over. So, bet with me if you'd like. And if you don't like, you probably save some money. <laughs> I'm just going to take Danny Dimes off the website then. Cool. Let me, you know, let me run and see that, Matt, really quick. If we have any more. I didn't see any more in there. Okay. This really isn't that bad. I mean, it's a little bit of a, of a scuff there, but not really not bad at all. Bernie Cozart. Not kind of Cozart. The Bengals in April released. New team on the way back. What? With Series is done, amigo. Okay. Someone just typed something really long, I see. Looking for a new team what running back. Is. Whoa. What running back has the longest had a shoot on play with the same team as well? Fourth round pick and 14, huh? Hold on. Bengals in April at least running around in this 10 year running back. Since Cincinnati picked him in the second round of 2013, other running backs have been in the league longer, but not all with the same team. With Bernard looking for a new team, what running back now has the longest active streak of employment with the same team? This player was a fourth-round pick in 2014 and has been with the same team. It's a great question. That is a great question. It's me, of course. Um, man, that's a really good question. James White's a really good guess. Zeke was in 2014, though. No, he was later, wasn't he?
Dang, Chris Wells got it right away. That was solid. Chris Wells, let's go, man. Guessed it right away, James White. I didn't realize he was that old. I feel like he had one of those guys that has been there forever. You like won't even notice him, right? Why is there internet? What? Is there internet working? It's nothing is loading. Now it's loading. Halftime in the Bucks Hawks game. 56 56. Tied up. I'm telling you, Hawks are up 15 to 2 at one point. Now it's tied at halftime. That is perfect for both the over and the spread. Because <laughs> the Bucks got to score a lot to get back in contention, and the Hawks want to try to build on their lead. I didn't bet. You didn't? I thought you, so you lied to everyone. No, I didn't. I didn't lie. I just told them what to pick. But you didn't follow through on it. Or did I? I don't know. You just said you didn't. So. I didn't. What team has gone over 50 years without selecting a running back in the first round? 50 years? <sighs> that feels like a Bill Bill. Chicago <laughs> Bears. <laughs> and that's... Did we, didn't we draft Forte? Was he? I thought he was second round, to be honest, man. Oh, we bought... Somebody bought the, uh, the Dutch. All right. There we go. Jonathan... Rohrbach. Johnny Rohrbach. There we Rohrbach. go. What a name. This team has gone over 50 years without selecting or anybody in the first round. Didn't we draft, like, Eddie or um, Anthony Thomas in the first round or something like that? I feel like it's not the Bears yet. Hmm. Nice. Thanks, Johnny Rohrbach. Good pickup. Good pickup. Need that auto in the PC. That's a nice auto. Very clean. What do we got that's full? Oh, past and present jersey. Let's go. Past and present jersey is full. We got one more left. One left. 51 or 60 on the box numbers, folks. Fifty years. What about selecting a running back in the first round? Was it Mon Green? Was he a first round pick? I think so. Or was that, uh, what's his name, Eddie Lacy, was he one? Oh yeah, he might have been. I don't think it's anyone in our division. Fifty years. Fifty years. A lot. I feel like that's more, should be more common knowledge. Yeah, I feel like I should know that. What running back to the Bears pick? That's a good question. Who the hell did the Bears I feel like it was Anthony pick? Thomas. You did not amount to much. I hope it's Thomas Jones. We didn't draft Thomas Jones, did we? I don't know. We got him from... All right, here we go. 51. Guys, best of luck on the break. Thanks for the fill. JSACO, you got one more pass and present jersey. Our hit is nice. 2,000 yard rusher. Former Offensive Player of the Year, Super Bowl champion out of Tennessee, Jamal Lewis. Jamal Lewis. It's a good pull. Jamal Lewis. Jay Lewis. 31. Nice pull. AFC North for David Jennings Braddock. Nice pull, dude. Who has the highest scoring average for one season in NBA history? How many points per game? I would guess that it's like Will Chamberlain. Right. 
cosmetic. What you doing over there? Writing out this Dutch information. Ah. We can get another Dutch up too. Uh, 36. Walter Payton. That would make sense. Is he a first round draft pick? I think he was, yeah. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> 36 points, maybe? 50.4? Are you kidding me? Wilt? He averaged 50 points a game for an entire season? Dude, he was like <laughs> a savage. He was a man among boys. Literally. I said, David, 50 a game? Dude, this guy scored 100 points in a game once. I know, but damn. You also have to follow that up with some more big performances, dude. He's not averaging 50, so that means he's like scoring like 70 sometimes, probably. And... He's averaging 50 means, dude. On a nightly basis, he's getting 50 points. You walk into the gym, you're like, all right, let's watch Will Chamberlain put up a couple layups here. 25 of them to be <laughs> exact. Yeah, that was like before threes. Uh, there were no threes. Wilt the stilt. Damn. Let's get a second dodge. He's getting it. All right, let's do a... I'll do a quick little breakdown here. He's a Viking guy. Saw his authentic earlier. People seem to like it a lot. Let me get this up on the website here. Let me get this up for a second. Shorty, I don't. Fine. You know what's wrong with it? I'll check in a sec. Alright, it is at... Holy smokes. It is a Jared Allen Eclipse. It's not cheap. It starts at 300 But again, the Dutch auction items work. Where the price drops every 10 minutes. Starts at 300 or work its way down, though. Is it not that thick? I think that's no, a ref, but we can be generous with this one, I think. All right, where are we at? We got uh, nine spots, eight spots, seven spots, eight spots. One spot on the Dutch. Let's go. Let's get this Dutch. Let me see what's wrong with this. Let me see what we got on this one. The auto is perfect. See the little things in the decal? We have a solution for that. You just put like a hot air dryer on it. Put a hair dryer on that, you can flatten it out easily. Okay. So that's not the issue. We can fix that. The issue, I believe, is back here. The issue is right here. Used to be a small mark. It's really not there either. I just kind of wiped it away with my finger. Chat. I don't think there's a ton wrong with it. I'm missing. looking. I just don't think it's... it's not missing a screw or anything? No. Pads? No, I, I don't want to be incorrect. I'm trying to show you guys pretty much everything I see. Maybe right there, there's a mark there. Take a look.
What do you think? Start scratching right there. Yeah, maybe right around the ear hole. That would be my. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. It's right in the ear hole. That's kind of what you see, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Dusty, who's the team that hasn't drafted a running back in 50 years? You gotta tell me. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> My toe. Team is at a location. Oh, was it the. No, it was the Raiders. The Rams? Team is a location or team name. Rams, maybe? Washington. Oh, Washington. No? Portis? Portis. Wow, it is Washington. When did Portis get drafted? Oh, second over second round. Wow. Wasn't Eddie Lacy? Wasn't he a first round pick? Eddie Lacy was second rounder. Really? Wow. Well, oh, yeah. Portis didn't even get drafted by the Washington football team. It was a Redskin, baby. He was a Denver Bronco first, right? Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. Eddie Lacy. I think that Dutch is popular, dude. You want to lower it. Man, I was giving it a little bit of time there. No, you're good. Do what you're gonna do. What you gonna do? Oops. I don't like wireless mouse and keyboard. Why? Just too inconsistent. Here's one you probably won't get, challenge accepted, but it's fun. What do the following players have in common? Henry Ruggs, Will Fuller, Gardner Minshew, Willie Sneed, Ronald Jones, and Todd Gurley. I actually know the answer to this. Um, How? I won't say it right away, but I think I'm going to let the chat get it. I, You know what? I'm just going to get it. Just do it. They're all the thirds. Or they're all, uh. they're all like... They're all like, uh, grandpas have the same names. So they're all, all part of the family tree. They're all juniors. Or they're, all they're all the third or the fourths, yeah. right? Or the fourths. Yeah, let's go! Close enough, baby. You said you probably won't get this. You like the wireless mouse, Austin? I have a wired gaming mouse. I'm a fan of it. That's good trivia. That's fun trivia. Dusty's quick, man. He's got like, does he have these like queued up, like ready to I go? I think so. I think he copies and pastes them pretty quick, yeah. Shorty, I don't mind. Who holds the best rookie passer rating in NFL history? Oh boy. Who do you think? Who holds the best rookie passer rating in NFL history? Got him. That's a good guess in Herbert. Who's JJ? I don't know. I 
I think it's his trivia guy. Oh, his trivia guy is JJ. Andrew Luck, that's a good guess. Oh, please don't say RG3. I hope that's not it. G3. I really hope it's not him. I do hope it's him. It is Dan. It is Dan. Dan Marino? Oh, Dak. Oh. That was a big misspelling right there. <laughs> that was a very important thing to spell right, Chris. That was a very autocorrect <laughs> yeah. punch the screen. Yeah, I agree. Let's Let's Google something here. Uh, expert. Alright. He broke the record previously held by RG3. That sucks. Thank God. What's the only team that has two running backs on its roster that both carry the ball at least 20 times? Jeez, that's like so specific. Um, I'm going to guess Tampa Bay. Ryan Leaf. <laughs> Colts is a good guess. What's the only team that has two running backs on the roster that both carried the ball at least 20 times inside the five yard line last year? Lions is a good guess. Browns is a great guess. Ravens? Yeah, Gus Edwards and uh, J.K. Dobbins. Ravens is a great guess. <laughs> Jason Sharp, man. Sorry. How about the... Uh... So well, gas and Ravens, but no. The Jacksonville Jaguars. No. <laughs> you couldn't even name me their second running back. James Robinson. Yeah, and. And. Lavisca Chenault. Wide receiver. I know. Slot guy, baby. Fred Taylor. Not. <laughs> Maurice Jones Drew. AFC West, Raiders, the Raiders, bro, this is, oh, he just signed with the Raiders, I thought it was on the same team last year, wow, tricky stuff there, Dusty, that's tricky stuff, that was a curveball, he cheated us, kind of, guys, I lowered the Jared Allen Dutch to 275, that was like a ball you hit right down the middle of the fairway, then it just fades off to the right, mm -hmm. and then you're in the six inch rock. Mm -hmm. This football trip sucks. <laughs> My trivia guy. <laughs> Is 
that like a you actually have a guy or is it just like a website? I could see that being like a website, like mytriviaguy.com. Yeah. Mytriviaguy.com. Just like a bunch of random trivia questions. Slime, mini should be up tomorrow or Tuesday. Wednesday the latest. Who was the last wide receiver to go over a thousand receiving yards? Oh boy. You think Alshon got over a thousand? No. Probably not. The last Eagles wide receiver to reach a thousand yards receiving was. Did Zach Ertz have a thousand yards? He's not a receiver though. Austin, uh, true or false? A girl once scored 101 points. It is true, and that was uh, Reggie Miller's sister. Really? Cheryl Miller. We did do a pass and prize. We actually did two of those. Wait. Who was the last eagle to go over 1,000 receiving yards? Damn, Jeremy Macklin. Wow. Dirty Dancer, hot. Red hot. Hot, hot. Jumping out the grease. It's Bostain, man. Bostain's hot. We just got Robert Anderson jumping in on a break. Thanks, Rob. Closer and closer on some breaks, and we're going to put the link in the chat. Let's see if we can close up anything else. Jared Allen, I'm dropping it again. Jared Allen goes down to, I think, a pretty fair price at 250. 250. 250 for the Jared Allen. I got to put away that Kosar as well. Ernie. You have the ticket for who bought it? Yeah. Thank you, amigo. What's up, Rob? Hey, Rob, we got a Dutch auction item that you might be interested in. Dutch auction items have an imperfection that we can't put in our boxes that slowly drop in price as the show goes on. Today we have a Jared Allen Eclipse here on the table. Rob, good to see you back in the breaks. These questions are so long, it's like hard to like keep track of it. Marshall Falk and James Brooks once had three straight seasons where they carried the ball over 100 times and averaged more than five yards a carry. Who are the only two running backs who have done this since the merger in 1970? Not just one season, but three consecutive. Both are active players, the streaks are active, and they play in the same division. It's okay, Dusty. I just... It's a lot of reading. Don't give Dusty crap. You gotta go through me. To give Dusty crap. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Ezekiel Elliott. Saquon Barkley. I think he's had three in a row. He was, what, 18? I don't think he's played three seasons, has he? Sheesh. <laughs> Zeke and then who? Who for the Eagles? No, it's not Sanders. Oh, yeah. He got Zeke. drafted in 19. Who is... It's not Zeke. Adrian Peterson? <laughs> no, it's not Zeke. No, he didn't have a... He didn't have 100 carries last year. Um... I'm 
was a NFC South. Alan Kamara and no. Um, Ronald Jones. No. Leonard Fournette. He didn't have 100 carries last year. Now, Edwards has only been in the league, league for one or two years. It's not James Conner. Oh, it is right. Oh! It is Edwards. Chubb and Mixon. Damn. Just Edwards has been in the league three years. <laughs> I have no idea, Doc. I guess. Question seems suspect. It's a good question. That's tough. Atlanta up three on Milwaukee, 73. Oh, Kevin Herter from deep. Splash. He has three yards. Yeah, three years. Bang, 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 bang. Kevin Herter. What do they call him? Oh, red velvet. <laughs> red velvet. Yeah, that's funny. Like the cake. Sure. Gus Edwards has been good, man. Yeah, he's played three years. Didn't know that. He's uh, from Liberia. Get out of here! Are you serious? Yeah, he's born in Liberia. Travel. He did travel. Yeah, I haven't seen a travel call in the NBA in months. He definitely traveled. Nice travel, Clint Capella. You have fun. I think they took traveling out of the rule book. Traveling, I don't think, is taken much into consideration. You know that guy from Black Mirror? Do you ever watch Black Mirror before? TV show on Netflix? No. You should get into Black Mirror. Some very intense episodes. I'm a big fan of that really? show. Yeah, a little sweaty? Yeah. It's sweaty be... What is that? Why is it sweaty? It's just because it's very real. Like, it's very... It Technology based. Like it could happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, good D, Herder? Dang. Black. Mirror. It's like all advances in technology, and I can just see that stuff potentially coming through. Coming true. And it scares you? Yeah, a little bit. That's, Five seasons? That's why it's scary, because that stuff seems very real. Is anybody famous in it? Yeah. I had some famous actors in it. Kevin Herter locks down Drew Holiday on that possession. Good D. Travel. I'll ask Matt Bohannon before we started today. And I'll ask you guys now. I don't know if we went over this in one of the earlier breaks, though. We may have. But can you guys tell me... Ooh. Going way down on the Dutch auction. Jared Allen! Jared Allen is at 230 in the Dutch auction. Maryland is over three things. Fishing, crab cakes, and Kevin Herter. <laughs> How about DJ Moore? And didn't, uh... Who else went there? Taysom Hill? Maryland? Yeah. No, he's, uh, he's Purdue. No. Stefan Diggs? Did he? Yeah. I feel Stephon like I've Diggs. never seen Stefan Diggs Maryland stuff. Stefan Diggs definitely went to Maryland. Where did Taysom Hill go? I think he's Purdue. Brigham Young. He's a BYU guy. He's a... I hate Taysom Hill. That sucks. <laughs> what were you going to ask the chat? Who is the leading scorer in Brooklyn Nets history? Oh, yeah. Who is the leading scorer in Brooklyn Nets history? The answer is in the name. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I guess so. You kind of gave it away, but that's that's fine. Yes. Nets or Brooklyn, New Jersey as well, counting New Jersey. When I heard this, I was like, you are joking. So did I. 
Dr. J, I thought... Dr. J played a lot of his career with the Philadelphia 76ers, though. When he was amazing, he was with the 76ers. I thought it was Dr. J as well. Austin, who's the leading scorer in Brooklyn or New Jersey Nets history? The most points in Nets history. The answer will is is shocking. You would think Jason Kidd, Vince Carter, Dr. J. He had a lot of points for the Nets, but he was mainly a sixer. Dusty, we may have talked about this on a noon show with Dave. It's Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez. That's terrible. That's incredible for him. And Dusty, we trust you. Guy gets buckets. Where did Brooke Lopez go to college? In Stanford. Stanford. Robin Lopez. The Twin Towers. Stanford. Same time. Yeah, they're twins. Two tall twins. I take all the quizzes. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to do a last call here. You guys want to hop in on any other breaks? It's been a little bit quiet in the fast last minutes here. Kenny Anderson or Rick Barry? All right, Dusty. What about... Are, you, are football or are scorers? Okay, so Seattle Supersonics. Short two. Keeping. Detlef Shrimp. I gotta look it up. Maybe Kevin Durant. Seattle Supersonics. <laughs> Trivia for you, Matt. Uh, Bob. Lauren Worsley. Brooks, Brooke Lopez, seriously, Rob. Brooke Lopez is seriously the all-time scorer for the Nets. Yes. Isn't that nuts? That is very nuts. That's nutty. Tis nutty. You know who's good? Chris Middleton. He could be yes. a superstar. Lauren Worsley. I have no idea, Bob. Gump Wars. That is the ugliest nickname I've ever seen in my life. Ew. Many mock drafts suggest Kyle Pitts can become the first tight end in the Super Bowl era to be selected with a top four pick. Currently, there has been only one to go in the top five. When the Broncos selected Riley Odom's fifth in the past 20 years, who are the only two tight ends who have been chosen sixth overall? TJ Hawkinson? Is Hawkinson six? Or is he eight? All right, guys, let me do it for tonight's UA Live break. I'm going to drop that Jared Allen to its final price. Dropping it down to its final price, guys. $210. $210. That's its final price on the Jared Allen Eclipse. Really good price. Not gonna lie. Two ten. Dang. See you, Bob. Have a good one, Bob. Bob. Bobby. Vernon Davis, I don't know. Dusty, you're the man with the trivia. We appreciate that very much. You keep the chat going. That's what I like. <laughs> Joe Aguilar. <laughs> give me Joe Aguilar or give me death. Ah, Joey.
<laughs> Joe Aguilar was close. He's always close, man. He's never a wrong answer. See you, Dust. See you tomorrow. I'll be on at noon with Dave. I need a bucket here. All right, guys. Sign it off. Jared Allen. At 210 bucks. Dusty, you want it, man? Dusty, it's at 210. Dusty, I'll see you tomorrow for lunch. What are we having? What should we have tomorrow for lunch? Sushi tomorrow? I kind of want like a rainbow roll. Dusty, I think you said 200 bucks earlier, man. You ever had a rainbow roll before? I have not. You like sushi? Um, I could go for some actually. Uh, not really. I could go for some. I'll put the tip jar up there if you guys want to donate. Anything. You lower ten more dollars? Yeah. That's the bottom dollar price, Dust. Ten bones. Two hundred bucks. Two hundred for the new house too. That'd be sick. Dusty, it's all yours, man. Go get it. Jimmy John's is always good. I like Jimmy John's. I thought you were Jersey Mike. Guy. I like the roast beef from there. I like Jersey Mike's the best. It's your it's your all time. I like Jersey, Jimmy John's works. Is it still open? What? Jimmy John's. Want some? I already ate. Did you eat? No. You gotta be dying. I'm certainly not living. Oh, it's closed. Golly. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for hanging out with us here in the UA Live Break Studio. Helping us open up some boxes. Waited it out. Had some fun. Called last call a little while ago. Doesn't look like anyone else wants to jump in on some breaks. Appreciate you guys for having us. Have yourselves a great rest of your Sunday. We're going to head out of here and get ready for tomorrow. Oh, Dusty is snagging the Dutch. Cool, Dusty. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it very much. It's gonna look nice in the casa. In Dusty and Trusty. It's gonna look nice in the casa. What if someone just jumped in and snagged it? That's it. All's fair in love and war, my friend. What's that from? I don't know, it's just an old saying. Is it Dusty? Dusty! Yes, sir! Dusty! Dusty, I'm gonna throw in something nice for you. Dusty, what size shirt do you wear? He writes on that. I will, yeah. Dusty, what size shirt do you rock these days? He's got that summer bod going. This is probably like a medium. I was thinking, I was gonna ship a medium. That summer body. I love it. 2XL is great, my friend. I love a baggie. Oh, me too. Big baggy. Shirt guy. Cool. You got it, dude. You got it, Dust. We'll send it out tomorrow. <laughs> it's all good, Dusty. We all have our days, man. I'm a bigger boy these days. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good night. Dusty, thanks, man, for copping that. Jared Allen. You can sign it off. See you guys tomorrow. 12 p.m. Central Standard Time for some more UA Live Breaks. Dusty, I'll put a shirt in that box. We'll Steve ship it tonight. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining See us tonight.